done well good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone wherever you may be across this beautiful blue green globe of ours this is real news live i'm your host mike barrett in seattle washington and that lovely lady over there with the lustrous hair is jennifer Fala doring in hayden idaho jen jen how are you this beautiful friday i am fabulous and think- to tell you the truth it's not beautiful here it's gray and dark and yeah yeah it's gray here too we get a lot of the same gray there yeah i don't i don't like gray i need to move to someplace sunny okay guys well you know free reading friday the concept behind free reading friday is that jen comes in and does a, you know a lot of free readings um christine loves your blouse jen thank you my and, you sweater know, with the big word, sleeves I love you it. get one question jen answers the one question for you and uh that's kind of <laughs> you need a Jim Fetzer impersonation there. Like a, Jim, as a Jim Fetzer, I'm in Wisconsin somewhere. I don't have a prostate, <laughs> but damn it, I'm really mad. Anyway, <laughs> um, Jim Fetzer is a guy I did a show with last, uh, like in 2019. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so we had a live stream from Phil yesterday, and you know, it was kind of interesting, very low key, and he said he had intel, and, and the intel that he said he had. Which I'm not entirely sure he really has, is that at first I thought he said Russia, Canada, and the United States had formed a military alliance to take out the bad guys, to take out the cabal. Then later he said China, Russia, and the United States had formed an alliance to take out the bad guys, to take out the cabal. And that's really interesting because, you know, yesterday, day before, the United States bombed Syria and were supposedly going after terrorists and instead took out, of course, you know, a family, mother, children, all these people who weren't doing anything. And if Trump is in control, I, I doubt he would have issued that order. So that's a question I want to ask. And then I know you have some thoughts. And then what he said was, is that they're now joining together because you can't, you can't just take down governments. You also have to take down criminal organizations like like the, the 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 drug cartels, you have to take them down as well, and that they're joining together to take down the drug cartels. So I don't know if any of that's real. I don't know if that's really going on, Jen. I know you've done some thinking about it, and I'd just like to turn it over to you and let you tell everybody what you know, and then we'll go from there. I have some other thoughts. We'll go from there. Okay. Little backstory on this. Um, I grew up in San Diego for the first 33 years of my life. My family was there for a lot, very, very long time. Um, we were border town. We are very used, you know, had lots of Mexican friends. My stepfather owned a manufacturing business um, where he had about 200 Mexican employees that would had papers legally come up from the border and work in the uh, the factory um, every day. So, you know, we weren't old enough to go to the bars. And so what we would do is we called it, we'd go to TJ, which is Tijuana. And um, as soon as we turned 18, maybe a little bit before, but, um, you know, and uh, probably somewhere in the early 90s, you know, we were doing that. And so maybe, you know, in the early 90s, my stepfather came to me. First of all, I used to say, hey, if you ever get in trouble, call this number when you're down there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't go to TJ. And he goes, well, just call this number if you get in trouble down and um <laughs> and um because they had all these big discotheque bars revolucion big street and we would go there um he said you can't go down there anymore i've been talking to the guys and you know there there's a lot of human trafficking going on um you may just disappear and we'll never find you uh they'll cut you up for organs whatever sex trade you can't go down there anymore I'm like, damn it. And so we didn't. I hadn't been back. I went to, um, I haven't been back. I mean, and I haven't even gone to like uh, Cabo or anything like that. And I love Cabo. Um, but 
so it's been a big problem. And over the years, I as I saw California deteriorate, it's not just about politicians and their policies. It's about California being taken over by the Mexican cartels and run by it. Um, they had to so that they could use that and, and, you know, freely come and go. And the politicians, and I've been telling everybody for a long time personally, that Pelosi and all of them are paid off and in with the cartels. And it was something that seems to be missed in everything that we talk about for a long time. I asked, and I believe that Trump, pretty much as soon as he got in, this is, this is you know, if you're talking about a border wall and they fought it, that's why. Because the, the cartels are an arm of, you know, kind of an enforcement arm of the cabal and are allowed to um in turn do whatever they want in mexico the they're in the you know they've they've over you know the the government has to do whatever they want in mexico the police are paid off it's a big thing in california and included that border doesn't stop that and so trump it's not like you know it was funny because phil comes out and says we've decided to take down the cabal now so we're going into their country and we're taking everybody out I don't think you understand that we've been working on taking the cabal out since day one and what they're doing now you would have probably have to have some kind of excuse or permission to go into with your federal military and go into another country and take out their people um so think about that aspect of it um what they're taking out now are the rem last remaining strongholds um, in Mexico and probably in L.A. Um, so I think they started by taking out tunnels, by cutting off access, by getting rid of MS-13 and doing all these things, things we heard way back in the beginning of all this. And I think this is probably then they had to then they kind of had to back up from that and start taking out you know, the big cabal members and certain people um, get Pelosi to play ball, things like that. But this is really, you know, if you don't take out this part of it, these are the vigilantes. These are the ones that, um, the minions that are going to run around in the streets. And, you know, California has changed significantly. Um, even since I left there in 06, uh, we left there in 06 because we started getting uh, Mexican gang writing, which were probably about 40 minutes um, northeast from the Tijuana border, 45 minutes drive. And way back there, we started getting Mexican gang writing on, on the buildings and things like that. We're like, what the heck? You know, this was always like a little horse town. Um, so it was getting bad. One of the reasons we decided to move, and if, you t if you've been to San Diego lately, it looks like Mexico. Um, everything has really just gone downhill. People haven't had the money to keep things up. The drought, all this other stuff are the reasons they use. But people just disappear in San Diego. You'll hear lots and lots of stories of, well, we found their car on the side of the road, and we don't know where they are. Um, so this is a major problem. If they don't take out the cartels, it's a huge force um, that could attack us all individually in our towns, stuff like that. So I don't think this is something new that like, oh, that's right. Let's go take out the cartel. It, it's been going on for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of stories to share about, whoops, that's not what I meant to do, about this. Um, I met a guy in 2007 um, who knew a lot of people in politics, had worked as a private investigator for Michael Reagan, the son of President Reagan, who had worked as a private investigator for various large corporations, who had a lot of connections in government. And this was a guy who, um, this was a guy who fed us information, myself and my co-author, Richard Hoagland, information from NASA about what was going on inside NASA from people he knew, um, 
when we were writing the book Dark Mission, which was a New York Times bestseller, very successful, sold close to 100,000 copies at this point. Uh, his nickname in the book was Deep, St Deep Space. His real name is something else, but everybody here would know him by the name of Juan Osaban. And he's been around for years, and he's got a lot of stories to tell and a lot of contacts. And one of the stories that he told when I first met him in 2007 is that when President Reagan came into office in 1981, one of the first things he did was he brought in William Casey, who was then director of the CIA, who he made director of CIA. And he said, look, the drugs are killing our kids. And your top job is to shut down the flow of drugs into our country. It's poisoning our children and it's got to stop. I cannot be involved in it. I can't know anything about it, but you have free reign to do whatever you need to do and you know this tape will self-destruct in five seconds if you get caught i have to disavow you and casey as a patriot accepted that responsibility so what they did is they decided to attack these supply chains so slowly but surely the cia began to intervene and kill and replace the guys with the boats and the planes that were bringing the drugs into the United States. And the plan was at some point to set everything up and call a big powwow among all the big cartels, the, the Vena cartels and Colombia and that kind of thing and tell them, okay, so for the last five years, you've been doing business with the American CIA. And as of this moment, you're out of business. You can either get out of the business, burn all your fields and walk away with all the billions of US dollars that you have, or you will never leave this room alive. And this was by 1988, they had reached this point, they completely controlled the drugs coming into the United States. And um, unfortunately, an informant, a guy, one of the officers, a guy named Enrique Camarena was found out, he was tortured, he told them what was going on, and the whole thing collapsed literally weeks two or three weeks before the big powwow was supposed to happen and everything was supposed to come down and this was late in reagan's presidency it would have been the greatest triumph of his presidency had it been pulled off although nobody nobody would ever be able to know about it and um and then and by the way some of that information is mine not not wants and then you know of course when george herbert walker bush got into office he realized this was a great revenue stream, so he put the CIA into the drug running business. He did exactly the opposite of what Reagan had planned to do, which is to shut everything down. So we lost that golden opportunity. So this has been going on forever. The other thing that I was surprised we didn't hear from Phil yesterday, which you are gonna hear today, is has anybody ever wondered why, as a for instance, why does Mitt Romney hate Donald Trump so much? Why did he vote to impeach him twice against all logic and legality? Why does he hate him so much? And I'm going to tell you why. By the way, TJ is a great place to party. I went down there a couple of times with some of my friends. And I had a blast. <laughs> a lot of I had a blast. Down Can't there. talk about it, but man, did I have a blast. <laughs> um, and the reason is this. In, in the Chihuahua region, of, of Mexico. Most people do not know this, but in the Chihuahua region of Mexico, there are a couple of uh, settlements and they are Mormon settlements. And one of them is named uh, LeBaron after the LeBaron crime family. And another one is named Romney after the Romney crime family. And the Romneys and the LeBarons are, in essence, um, nothing more than they're basically the Mormon versions of the Corleones and the Tatalias from The Godfather. They've been running drugs and child brides, child trafficking across the Mexican border for 100 years. The Romney family has been doing this. And when Trump came in, and said, I'm going to build a border wall and stop all this. It was extremely threatening to Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney's crime family and the LeBaron crime family. 
And by the way, if you don't know uh, the history, there was a woman, if you remember, two, three years ago, her, her and her family, her children were murdered by the cartels on a highway in Mexico. This is the woman, I forget her name. I don't really want to say her name, but she was a Mormon and they were all shot up and they were members of the, the Romney community named Romney. There is a sign somewhere of a town named Romney. This is her vehicle that's all shot up. Uh, I'm also going to tell you that I have a picture and I, cause I didn't really think we we're going to go. So I have a picture of this young woman when she was a child of eight or 10 years old with Barack Obama. So this woman had all kinds of dirt on the drug running, the child trafficking, the child raping that was going on by the Mormon settlements at the Mormon settlements by the Romney and LeBaron crime families. And she was obviously trafficked at some point to Barack Obama, because I'll get you the picture and I'll show it to you before the end of the show today. So this is what's got to stop in Mexico. I was surprised, again, that Phil did not bring this up yesterday. Maybe he doesn't know about it, but a lot of people who are on the inside know all about it. And this is why, yet another reason why, we desperately need Donald Trump back in office to finish the border wall, to close down the border, and Mitt Romney needs to go to prison forever, at the very least, depending on what he's ultimately responsible for. Now, remember, um, remember also that Romney got COVID a couple of weeks ago and was self-isolating. Now, in that chart that we have, that means he was detained and questioned. So it makes sense to me that there would be moves going on now against the Mexican cartels, military moves against them, if that's in fact what, what's going on with Romney, that he was detained, questioned, and, and probably has now been released. But obviously, I think he's going to be charged at some point. Jen, you look like you have some things you want to throw into some of the things I said. Meanwhile, you do that, I'm going to go look for that. You're doing stuff. fabulous with all of that, but just as you were talking about it, Something that stuck out to me uh, when Phil was talking, I'm like, okay, so if our government was going into a country, even if it was to take out, um, it, you know, cartels, right? Those people are still citizens of that country. Yeah. Um, like we wouldn't just go into England and just start taking out all their crime families. Um, if something else is up with that. And it's just, it's like, it's like the missing puzzle piece. And I'm like, what is it? What is it? Why would they be able to go down there and do that cross the border and clean out Mexico? Because, and, and before that, I was thinking, you know, there's people in Mexico really need to be saved. They wouldn't be trying to come over here all the time. They're trying to escape the crime families. And that is such a small percentage of the people that come over and think about all the children that, all these children are stolen from people. <clears throat> And taken yep. and yep. you know there's yep. so there's nothing they can't go up against it's like going up it's mafia they can't go up against them um so sad listen um not quite sure on this you guys do your digging and see if this makes any sense so he was talking about Sara and then he was talking about taking out and cleaning up Mexico Taking right. out the crime families. Well, he said, I think he said had to be done before they could implement Jasara. Why is that? You know why? What I just got? Yeah. Remember how recently I'm like, you know, in readings for a while, I've been telling people well, Canada's going to be part of the United States. I mean, it sounds way out there. I didn't, you know, but Canada's going to be part of the United States. And then we were thinking, okay, Australia's going to be part of the United States. And then if we're talking about islands, we're talking about things like that. And I'm like, yeah, it's like island group or something. Yeah. We might, uh, so I think that they will have their own identity, really, but there's, I think there's something in the Sara that includes Mexico in that equation, in that continent, United countries, or whatever it is that we're going to be, and that gives them the right, because Jasara has been started, to go down and clean them out. 
so Mexico might be part of it. That would be really cool. I mean, but yeah, you know, they've got this border wall trying to keep them all out. I don't think it's about trying to keep people out from, you know, just people that want to find a better life. It's about the cartels. It's about stopping them from having easy access into our country. Now, if let's say Canada, um, let's just say talk about this continent here. Let's say Canada, um, Mexico, United States all become United States. And let's say Mexico is a state. Um, they could come in and out. They might have to show, but there would be rules that they would have to, um, you know, follow. But that. Uh, that's what stuck out to me. I'm like, how are they able just to go down and do that? We that would start a Mexican United States Mexican yeah, Mexican war. American war number two. Yeah, you know, yeah, the second Mexican American war. There's got to yeah. be some kind of loophole that they're using to get in there, and it's just Sara. That's what it is. Wow, that is that is really cool. And if okay, you don't think Sara is um, real. Why the hell is our military in Mexico? <laughs> well, we that don't have. Here's the thing to remember too: we don't have any proof that it is. We have Phil's report. I, I'd like to see some stuff in the clear of conflicts taking place. I'd like to see this all out in the open. The United States, Russia, and China are engaged in military operations in Mexico to clean out the drug cartels. I'd like to see that as a headline on Fox News and CNN and all the corporate bought and paid for media, or at right. least. Or at least some Nancy Drew type person who had the guts to go down there and film it and show it. So we don't know that it is. We have a, we have a rumor that it is from a pretty reliable intel source in the name of Phil Phil Gabluski. So you know, and, and it makes sense in other contexts. You were gonna. Or did you pick something up you wanted to share there? Or it's true. It's true. Okay. So can you ask them <laughs> if we're going to see visual evidence of this in the next two weeks? not of the conquest that's what he said not of the conquest um we will see stuff about things that happened here um i think the mexican government government might somehow in the headlines or whatever take credit for it fine yeah, you might see fine. something like that the mexican military took out the blah 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 cartel you know now everybody can have, you know, can, can visit Tijuana in safety. Yeah, you can buy blankets. Dollar beers and whatever else you do in Tijuana. You walk in TJ and a guy just, we walk it past you. You want some cocaine, Don? You want some coke? I got some cocaine. Yeah, oh, that's... yeah, that wasn't my experience. What we would yeah. do is oh. they had like this um, 10, recent. 20 foot fences on the, the U.S. side um, down at the border, TJ. You pay like 20, 10, 20 bucks to park in there safely. You park in there, you walk through a fence, you get your, you go over the border, you get in a cab, you go to Revolucion, there usually be like four or five, six of us girls. Yeah. Somebody was designated to hold the money for the cab home, right? And um, and stay sober. And so, <laughs> so then we go down to Revolucion and it's like one dance bar after another and they bring out like buckets of dos equis that's why i like dos equis beer you could, and you um with down. lime and you know guys come around with the whistle and you, you buy you usually buy somebody's boyfriend a shot and they'll hold his head back and just pour the stuff down and it's fun anyway so we had many a good time there one time linda linda was supposed to hold the money okay and so we didn't she didn't and i'm like Linda, you were supposed to keep the money, and she had it in her shoe. Well, she did, but it fell out of her shoe. Anyway, so we're like, how are we going to get home? There's like five of us girls, and we're like, how are we going to get to the border to get to the car? Three o'clock in the morning. Okay, so we're like, or two o'clock or more, whatever it was. And um, so we tried to talk to this guy who looked like, who had a cab, looked like a dad, right? Mexican yeah. guy. And Linda's like half Mexican, and she's trying to remember how her grandma used to use, you know, and... And we all knew a little bit of Spanish and we're trying to talk to them. And, and then these two guys were talking and they're talking to each other like this and looking at us. And I'm like, we're walking. So then we left arm in arm, five teenage girl, well, 18 wow. year old girls walking to the border three o'clock in the morning. Okay. I'd tell you the rest of the story, but it's not okay to tell on the 
on the thing. But anyway, so we're walking and this guy's walking and we stop and he stops and we're all crying. We're like, we're going to die. We're going to die. And we made it there. And we were stupid enough to take back alleys to get there because we're stupid. insane. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> in Tijuana at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so then we get we see the walkthrough to get over to this this big walk around to get to the U.S. border. And at that time, you could just show an ID. And there's this old man hunched in the way. And like, <laughs> he's got this poncho over him and like Anne, who's like the, like the, the most anxiety ridden, like shy person. She's just like, um, he's in our way and he won't move. And he's like, he's doing something nasty. Okay. Under that poncho. I'm just going to say that. And I'm like, and if somebody streams, oh my God. And then Anne's like, I can't handle it. Goes and like pushes the old guy down. He rolls down the way. And everybody just starts screaming. And just starts running over the board. Wow. That's the worst experience I had there. But wow. I'm pretty sure, looking back on it, those guys that we were trying to get in the cab with were yeah. probably going to traffic us. And then I just said, Never mind. Let's go. And you had your you had your intuition, your instincts. Yeah. Yeah, but so that's. I just have, I just have stuff, one man. question about all that. You know, you want you want to TJ. I've been to TJ. It's fun. You know, as long as you have somebody who's Spanish speaking with you, it's okay. Uh, and, and you you talked about about the dance bars. Now, in my experience, the dance bars weren't exactly dance bars. So I'm wondering if there was, you know, smartphone technology back when you went to TJ and no. you went to one of these dance bars, would there be any video of you swinging on a pole, Jen? That's what I'd like to know. I was not a pole swinger. Um, <laughs> Linda, maybe. Linda, maybe. Linda but <laughs> no poles. It was just like big discotheques. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah, yeah it's weird there. because there, yeah, there's different sections, I guess, at TJ. Okay, uh, before we move on from this, I want to go back to what I talked to you about about earlier, which is, again, this is the young woman and her family. Look, look, I mean, really, when somebody like Mitt Romney looks at this family, he sees 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. He sees a baby farm. He sees children he can traffic to buyers in the United States for a lot of money. How do you think Mitt Romney made all of his money? How did his family make all of their money? But I want you to really look at this woman as best you can. Look at her face. Oh, hello. Um, and then I want you to look at this picture of this little girl. And this is taken, oh, about 2008 or 2009 with Barack Obama. Now, you can you can argue anything you want. You can, you can you know, make all kinds of statements about me or whatever you want but that's the same girl that's the girl who grown up who grows up to be murdered by the cartels in mexico it's the same girl and i, I want you to look at one other thing i want you to look at this bandage on barack obama's left middle finger okay as he's at this hot dog and pizza party probably at the white house with this little girl who would eight years later be killed. And I want you to remember the WikiLeaks emails from 2016, where we got a hold of John Podesta's emails, John Podesta being the pedophile creep that ran the Hillary Clinton campaign. And if you look at his pictures, you can see that his fingers are all craggly and he's got a bandage on his middle Can't even finger. Look at that, dude. And the reason he has the bandage is because as part of this spirit cooking thing, this Maria Abramovich, psychopath, devil worshiper, has this ritual that she makes all of her followers perform with a sharp knife cut deeply into the middle finger of your left hand and eat the pain. Oh, my God. Okay. So give me a break that Q is crazy. Give me a break that all of these psychopaths, look at this fucking reptile, are not connected. That little girl was trafficked to Barack Obama and then turned into a baby machine by the Romney family. 
so that they could sell her children to the highest bidder. And what a perfect forward. religion to get away with that kind of stuff. I mean, exactly. there are lots of kids in the Mormon religion, you know. I'm not going to... It's terrible. I'm not going to attack all Mormons because I have some Mormons that I know that I like. But I also we had Mormon neighbors that were pretty high up in the church in the Seattle area when I was growing up. And, <coughs> and their teenage daughter there told my sister that she remembered all these satanic rituals that she was forced to attend with her parents. It's part of the Mormon church that, in fact, it's satanic. So... We're just going to go with that. Not any of the Mormons I know, by the way. That's got to be higher up stuff. It's kind of like with the whole Mason um, saying higher up stuff. Yeah. Uh, my dad was a Mason. There's no way if anything was going on like that, he'd just scare the crap out of him. There's no way to have yeah. anything to do with it. Yeah. So that's that's the real story of the cartels and trafficking. And let me tell you this. If, if American soldiers are fighting and dying to remove this scourge from the earth, that's a good thing. It, it's it's a good thing. So yeah, it, the Mormons believe that Moroni was an extraterrestrial. It's it's crazy stuff. Well, it's so, about time that the Mexican people are freed from this free as from well. This. Yeah, free from this as well. It's it's also important. And and I do not think it is a coincidence that if that's what's going on now, two weeks ago, Mitt Romney got COVID. Which again, if you remember that code thing, he got COVID and was self isolating, which means he was arrested and detained and questioned. So we can only hope that Mitt Romney is one of the people that goes down first. I think that would be. And I, every time, awesome. and I never, before I knew about any of this, any time I would, we drove through, um, I think it was down 15. I think that was 15. Um, through Utah. Isn't that where he's from? Uh, yeah. Originally. Yeah. And I'm like, Family. just, I'm like, what am I feeling? What the hell? It's like under the ground. It's like all over the place. Like aliens out here. What is this I'm feeling? It's yeah, there's weird. There's aliens. There's genetic research that's gone on there. That's one of the reasons why they they want the children. And and you got the the freaky uh, edge of the Mormon Church. Yeah. So it's it's not a great place. It's just such a weird like low hum like. Yeah. I if can't you're... get away from this feeling, and I'm like. I want to get the hell out of here. I don't ever want to come to Utah again. My opinion is if you're attracted to Utah, there's something wrong with you. Because it's, oh, it's not a beautiful a, it's place in place certain that, places. But some people are really closed off to any of it. But It's not a place that good people are comfortable, in my opinion. So that's what I'm going to tell you. When I drove through it a couple of times on my way moving to and from California, I couldn't wait to get across the border. That's how and I felt. It's not like... It's not like New Mexico is a great place either, but uh, ugh, creepy. Okay, Something so the underground the ground there, that's, I just, I couldn't, and I didn't know about any of that then. But, yeah. um, you know, you you go by all the um, the oil refineries or whatever that is there, all that stuff, and you get down and you go down, and, you know, and you're still traveling and traveling, and it's just like, I couldn't even identify it. I'm like, what am I feeling here? We well, just want to get the hell out of here as fast as you can. Oh, you want to stop and stay the night? No. I want, to, I want to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, All right. So let's do questions because. Well, wait, wait a minute. I want to. I want to ask you about about Jasara and Asara because Phil did say this thing mm -hmm. yesterday, where they're saying he shifted his position. I don't think he did. He he basically said he said that debt was going to be forgiven. And you were going to be paid back your interest. Right. From previous debt. That's what he said. Which people are saying is different than what he said before i don't think it is i think it is what oh. he said before but i think it's wrong because what i've he said you're never going to get your principal back from your home loan from 30 years ago that's not true that's not what nasara is you are going to oh. get that back in in my opinion based on what i know and i think based on what jen's analyzed is you're going to get you're going to get all your current debt forgiven and that might be new with phil i don't really remember exactly and you're going to get your interest back. But Phil, see, Phil still thinks that when a bank loans you money and he talked about, oh, the banks are going to, the banks give you this and the banks give you that. The banks don't fucking have any money. It's all your money. Said it over and over and over again. All money is created by the signature of the living, breathing individual, Michael Herbert Barra, Jennifer Fala Dory. And it's held in accounts at Federal Reserve Bank's 
there's my account number for the H bank, which I, I got to look up whatever branch H is. It's yeah. on the back of your social security card. I think it's. Do not I show know. the front could be, again. Could be New York. I'm not going to do the front. But that's my account number. And if you look, there are, I guarantee you, there are dollar bills and hundreds and fifties and twenties that have that number on them. The H, the 5109-2360, guaranteed. So because Phil doesn't understand that that's where money comes from, he doesn't realize he's saying, well, you're going to get your, you're going to get the illegal part of it back, which is the interest. No, the whole thing is illegal. Therefore, the principal and interest are all yours. That's why Phil, Mr. Real Estate Agent, you know, mortgage broker, that's why the person who moves into the house, who signs off on the promissory note is referred to as the homeowner because he is the homeowner because it's his money because the bank never owned the property. Neither did the developer. Well, maybe the developer did, but you bought it from them with money that they took from your account at the Federal Reserve. So I want to ask again and go over this. Do you think that's right? Or is it just going to be, you know, debt forgiveness? If there's if debt forgiveness is part of it, it behooves everybody to have as much debt as they can. And, um, and you know, I think we're going to get principal and interest back. And I think they're going to fractionalize it times 10. And that's what the, that's the check they're going to cut you on. It's all of a sudden. Done. I have to stick with what I heard before. I really get turned around and personally involved in this one. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind yeah, of hard to absolutely. get. It's hard to get the actual answers for this one because I'm not, when you don't want to hear something like, nope, um, <laughs> you kind of put walls up. Difficult. Um, so what I originally got was that I originally didn't think there would be checks, remember? And I had that yeah. meditation and yep. I was walking out <clears throat> ready to leave. And he said, I want to show you something. And I'm like, that never happens. Okay, what are we what are we doing? And I walk over to the stone wall there that he was standing next to and he's turning around looking at something on the wall and I go down and it's a check about that big. Mm -hmm. One of those big business kind of checks. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like uh and it was blue. And I said, What is this? It's a check. And I start trying to read it and I'm seeing one one and I say who is this for? And he said, it's for you. And I said, well, that's good. And I'm like, when's that coming? Uh, what, you know, I said, how much is it for? And I wasn't going to tell everybody, but he said, um, 11. $11 million. And I went, for what? And he goes, your birthright. Mm -hmm. And I'm not somebody, I have heard Mike talk about this before, but he never used that phrase. He never used that phrase. And then I came back to him and I talked to him about it and we sat down and we crunched the numbers and we th were talking about it and we're like, you know, it would be probably about that amount. And then we tried to figure out, and then I asked about his amount, I got the amount. And then he goes, you know what? That makes sense because that would be about the amount. So if I you, came back to you guys if, and if I said, you, I think there will be checks. If you add it up, Every mortgage I've had, every refinance, every credit card, every car loan, put them all together. It would come to a number that is a fraction of 10. It's, ten, it's one tenth of the check amount that you gave me, that you gave me. And that makes complete sense because in fractionalized reserve banking, which is what we live in, the banks have received 10 times the amount of money that they loan you. If a bank loans me $100,000, they get a million dollars to then do whatever they Her want. Per note. That's my money. That's and that's my probably money. the tally so, on your social security number. Exactly. So they, the, so the number you gave me pretty much, I mean, I could go back and really go through all the mortgages I can remember and everything, and I bet it would add up to one-tenth of the amount my check that you said I'm going to get in April and I better get it in April, Jenner. I'm going to be really mad. Um, I'm just not, I'm you not get really that. mad all the time. We'll just I know, we'll deal really with hoping. it then. Okay. But I'm really I was talking to somebody today. Yes. I do. I don't know why I keep scheduling readings at 9am before the show, but I did, I did no. another one today. 
don't know why. And um, we were talking about when we were going to see this. You know, like, when is this going to kick in? When are we going to start seeing things zeroed out? When are we going to start getting... I don't know when the checks are coming. Because that seems like a comp... Kind of like a personal process, kind of like taxes are done. Where you yeah, before, before you told me mine would be in April, and I, I'm yeah. hoping that's holds true. We'll check that later, not today because we're too emotionally involved. But we'll check that later. Today, but. I got uh, and I'm starting to forget. I have to ask her what I said. If you're in the chat and you don't care if anybody knows who you are, go ahead and tell me what I said. <laughs> um, but basically, I'm looking at late, uh. February. I mean, okay, that's even better. Everybody than that's saying that it's all we're almost there. I mean, and then yeah. like last week, I got like next week, so it's somewhere around February. So it makes sense, that, right? Like all the little pe puzzle pieces. But we sat down, put all these puzzle pieces. You know, we got the Jasara ready to go. We got other countries getting involved in it and, and um, teaming up with us. So if he, if what he said is correct to go and clean out Mexico, why do we have the right to do that? Possibly because of Jacera. Um, you know, we've made deals with the leaders of those countries to combine our efforts here and what make one big continent or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Fine with me. Um, the thing is, is you got that going on. You've got um, accounts of military shooting and, and exercises and practicing. Listen, they're not going to do practice in an actual town they have so many military bases especially in california and we've got camp pendleton they do stuff like that over there all the time but not in the middle of la okay that's not practice that's not an exercise um we've got a lot we have evidence all around us that is leading up to and revving up to things that we know should be done or needs to be done in order for this financial reset to happen right and, and honestly, cleaning up the cartels would be one of the last things you would deal with because you first of all you have to deal with all the governments, and then you start dealing with the with the pirates. You know, that's okay. That's so fourth from the last um, on our screen here, big damn it, it went down. There's a comment uh, about the checks would cut the workforce in half. Now, no, Mike and I talked about that. No, yeah, no, that's not right. And, and again, everybody wants to throw cold water on this because they're all afraid it's going to upset everything. First of all, post joy, it doesn't matter if you paid the debt off. It's recorded. They know that you took that debt. You will get reimbursed for that debt. Okay, deceased people, to answer some of the questions, will not get reimbursed. They're dead. People who are living. Are dead. Do you know why they have the information? Why? Because it's recorded through your social security number, your birth certificate, actually. It's through your birth certificate. It is through and birth that's certificate. how you have value to be traded and make that's more correct. money off of. And that's why Jen, I keep track of everything. Jen, you are getting you're getting it. You are finally no I'm not finally, <laughs> you are getting it. Good for you. Jen gets it. So I went to school. You know they're not gonna cut the workforce <laughs> by very much. There's a lot of people sitting around doing nothing. They've never had a mortgage. They have very little credit card debt. They probably only have at least one car. If they're in, all those people are still going to have to work. Even if you get, even if you've had one mortgage for $300,000 and you've paid $36,000 on it so far, and you're 27 or 28, you're only going to get $36,000. You can use that as a nest egg to build for your wealth, but you're still going to have to work. The people right, it's going to be people over, like 50 and up are going to have these large checks coming because like they had the time to accumulate it. Are going to get the and, large checks. And this isn't going to happen all the time. This is like one wave of everybody one like thing. over 50 or on up, you know, is going to be well off. And then the, the retirement age is going to be at 55. So what's going to happen? Yeah, there may be an initial like, hey, woohoo, nobody's working. But what it does well, is going to... It's going to leave you all these now. professional positions for all of the younger people to get into who have been competing mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to have a younger yeah, a of, workforce. A lot of people over 40 and 50 are going to get their check for whatever, 400,000 times, you know, 10, and they're going to retire. 
And yeah, they're going to turn around and give their kid that's struggling, who's like 28, they're going to say, here's, you know, 20, 30 grand, go put it down on a house. Go, and go now that you got to work to keep house. the house. And, yeah. and then all those, like you say, all those jobs are going to open up for the younger people because there's still going to be a need for them. And they're going to pay better because there's going to be a shortage of workers. And so, they're going to buy welcome. more. The, the older half of society will be the richest. They will be the one buying for grandkids and kids and yeah. going on trips and doing one. everything they should be doing. I will be the one buying the Ferrari that you, the 22-year-old salesman at the Ferrari dealership, are going to sell to me and get a commission out of. Look at it that way. So that's the plan to restructure. That's also why when I hear people say, oh, they're going to make sure you don't get very much money out of the reset of the currencies and all that. And oh, Nassar, they're not, you're not going to get very much money out of it. That's why I think they're all wrong, because they're going to need people to recirculate this money to restart the economy which has been destroyed by the, the thing well the we've all gotten very accustomed to the phrase too good to be true and yep. being disappointed um year after year generation after generation from the way that the government has conducted itself and stolen from us and nobody has any idea that it's been going on and i didn't either and you know, I'm not I'm not someone to jump on bandwagons because I didn't think we'd get checks because I thought the same thing. Oh, well, everybody yep. would be rich and then, you know, society would collapse. Nobody would be at the grocery store selling, but that's not true. And if you take a closer look at it and really follow it down the chain, you know, um, the younger half of society will be thriving because yep. of the older half putting it in. And that really on a spiritual level is a wonderful thing because it's a loving exchange, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, and it's, it's something that keeps the wheel turning. And people will be retiring, you know, at 50 now instead of 62 when they're still young and have their health and- 55. Are able to get full erections. Okay, so- um, Did you say erection? Do we have, you missed that part. I did that real quick. Do you have any, Gentel that you would like to share with us that's purely from you, from the angels. That was basically in um I really think the Jasara and Nasara thing's gonna happen in February. You know, don't get well I don't you can know. Hold don't, it, but it's don't it really me up to the yeah. wall, but <laughs> yeah. all the information I have is that it is really close. Really I'm just close. watching people here and there and there and there say things like this. There's something about Phil, and it's not like all the way through the last minute saying, I haven't received any intel that it's not happening in January. Maybe mm -hmm. it did. You know, maybe all the information I gave you in December uh, about dates for December and January for this thing happened. Okay, maybe it's just all ready to go it's all signed and sealed now we have the right how the hell else would we have the right to go down into mexico and remove their citizens even if they're bad guys why the hell is uh, australia in on our lottery that's a national lottery um yep yep there's just too many things that line up that say we are it definitely been going through an escalation. We are in and we're coming up on the grand finale. And that grand finale will be an announcement of some sort. Um, it just depends on how rocky this needs to be on what we'll actually see. But, you know, and I know you've heard that before, but just, just wait till the end of February before you start bitching, okay? Yeah. I think it's like right here. I mean, I really do. Okay. Let's wait until then. Yeah. Uh, okay. So there are uh, about 600, 700 people in the live stream right now. That's super awesome. Thank you for being here. A whole lot of you guys on Mike Barrett 3 and Mike Barrett 333. And just to let you know, this live stream will be taken down almost immediately after the show to protect those two YouTube channels, which we stream to and which we reach a lot of people through. 
from being hit with a strike. So you can find the show on mikebarra.blogspot.com pretty much at all times. Go to mikebarra.blogspot.com. There it is. Here's the show, Free Reading Friday with Mike and Jen, live stream 10 a.m. Pacific. Most of the shows will be here. Look, this is owned by Google. They may eventually take this down. If they do, I'll find another site and another source. But if mikebarra.blogspot should disappear and if the YouTube channel should disappear, then go directly to the Rumble channel. Go to Real News Live on Rumble. Let's get everybody uh, a Rumble account, get signed up and subscribe to Real News Live on Rumble. You will <laughs> never show, never miss an update. Also, please, if you don't mind, would you patronize our wonderful sponsors? over at the ungoverned t-shirt company.com ungovernedtees.com where you can get all kinds of cool patriotic gear like baseball caps and tweedledum 2020 shirts and it's a pandemic stupid and on the ungoverned t-shirt be logo beanie the child lives matter shirts the mugs the fake news creates fear t-shirts the socks the patches the obama trader t-shirt and my personal favorites the obama gate and maga long sleeve tee and crew neck sweatshirt in either beige or black the ungoverned t-shirt company.com ungoverned .com, true patriot gear for true patriots and by the way if you tune in to tomorrow night's show at 7 p.m pacific 10 p.m eastern the saturday night live show with me and candace whitelight and dr brooks agnew and possibly tv's blake wally we're going to have a free giveaway on that show tomorrow night from something of something from the ungoverned t-shirt company.com company they're going to give away some merchandise i don't know what it is yet i got to talk to Brigitte, one of the owners and maybe we can get shay to come on and tell us what it's going to be we'll see maybe shay will come back for a visit all right meantime jennifer why don't you tell us what's going on over at jenniferfalaw.com i will but before that i just wanted to remind everybody that i have created a chat group um for uh, extreme emergencies on the app called signal download signal and we were told we don't know if it's true but if it is cool um that if everything goes down signal would be up for a while and then we could get um live boots on the ground updates from all of you and share that and you can also communicate with your children because you know they have um smartphones and everything um yeah it's the it's the blue it's a blue app with a little conversation bubble logo uh yeah on on Apple and on uh, Android. So go, 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 go to, to Telegram. The name Android is the same um, on Telegram and on Signal. It's Philosophy, F-A-L-L-A-W-S-O-P-H-Y. Um, I've been putting the link on Telegram. I will put it on later if you can't find it, if you can't. But you can also search for that name on Signal. Anyway, that's how that's our last ditch effort to stay um, informed and together. In, in, yeah. If something should happen all right okay so what we got right now is i still have the weight loss healings up that is something that is uh quite involved it's a healing on the body it's a fat burn a metabolism boost a thyroid heal um and it's a cleanse it's a talk with the soul that works like hypnosis so get on that is for a limited time i will be taking those down soon um probably next week so get on in there and get that scheduled um we also have gift cards for your friends for a 30 minute reading a divine healing you can purchase those and it is a picture you can send it to them they schedule with me and you're done below that we have a love button somebody hit the love button yesterday and i would like to say publicly thank you to carissa i believe it was carissa i have to look. i'm sorry <laughs> it was very it was generous and I, yes and i yeah. really 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 appreciate that um we have our psychic development classes two recorded that you can buy right now and listen over and over again it is a private stream and they are still up um monday night at uh, 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern on february 7th we are going to be doing class three which is clear audience clear hearing i'm going to be teaching you how to listen psychically actually just basically how to function as a soul listen to god listen to jesus listen to the angels listen to your guides and how to do it safely and what it feels like what it looks like and if you attend the live event you'll be able to ask me questions about it there also um didn't take it down yet i'm going to take it down <laughs> 
So you got one more day. You got one more day to get the yearly forecast on the uh, readings and services page. I'll figure out some kind of other special for next month. For, for, for right now, that's it. Yearly forecast reading. That is a look ahead for 12 months in several areas of your life and uh, business, uh, finance, work, love, health, family, all of that, what's going to happen over the next 12 months. So if you want that, you better get it because I'm going to go in there and bloop, take it down. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, no, go to free. And, you know, as soon as I get involved and start revving up my group on Facebook, because I thought I was going to take down, people start take, talking about taking it down. So either way, we got like 17 plus thousand people over there. And we're, you know, um, it's a free reading group. It's called Free Psychic Readings, Beacon of Light. <clears throat> go over there, join. You can always find me there. Um, and you can get one free waiting a week over there. Um, and I think that's it. Let me see if I can find it. Search for free beacon of light. Beacon of light. Free psychic readings, beacon of light. There it is right there. Yeah. I post things. I say things. I have other readers there who specialize in certain areas. Um, they have been with me for ever and um i don't just let anybody and i actually haven't taken on any new readers for years i'm giving this group up because my daughter is gonna start practicing um she is probably the i could tell you stories that just knock your socks off she doesn't want to have wow. to do that right now but her strongest medium i've ever seen in my life wow um, she sees it with her physical eyes hears with her physical ears and she'll say, Mom, there's a spirit in the house. And I said, where? She said, right there. I'll tune in. I'll describe it. And she goes, that's it. And then she'll describe something that I didn't notice. And I'll look and I'll say, yep, that, that does have tattoos on his neck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you, uh, mother, a mother-daughter thing over there at Free uh, Psychic Readings. Well, it's, it's time. Awesome. You know, she's, I, I said it would be a shame I mean, you don't have to do that, Faith, but it would be a shame if you didn't use it to help people because it's she's amazing. Um, so I got a trainer, but she's going to practice there. So that's why I'm doing this now. So get on over there. It's going to be fun to watch. Cool. And the class is Monday. Don't forget to get signed up for that. And if you'd yeah. like to send me some love, I've gotten a lot of love from you people lately. I love you. Thank you very much. I just got some love. Oh, shit. I just got some love from three new people. Uh, Glenn Claddock. Thank you again, Glenn and a couple other people and i lost track of it i'm so so sorry i will try to get your names out there and again i'm also on the description on these youtube videos i i'm uh, and rumble i've been adding people's names that that contribute money and i've stopped doing that because i've had some people say oh i don't want my name out there so yeah if you want your name added to the patrons list i'm happy to do so just let me know in the PayPal contribution if you send some love or through Venmo. Let me know if that's okay or not okay. That, that, mm -hmm. Then I'll start adding to it again. But you can, oh, I said I hit Blake Wally's. It's not, I don't want Blake Wally to have that money. I want me to have it. It's paypal.me <laughs> slash Mike Thera and Venmo at, I thought I don't want Blake to have money, but you know, paypal.me slash Mike Thera and Venmo at Mike dash Thera. You can send some love to the show. I appreciate all of you. And love helps keep the doors open and keep the broadcast going and puts on great shows like this one and um, and uh, Saturday Night Live, which is always fun. And with Jen Jen, you can always find her on jenniferfalat.com. On YouTube is Jennifer Falat Doring. She is philosophy on Telegram and free psychic readings, speaking of light on Facebook as we just Dated. Jen, shall we go to the chat? Yeah, I got 15 minutes. Let's do lightning round. If you guys have one specific question, please. And if you have uh, asked quite a while ago, ask again. Um, and um, also, um, yeah, yeah, she did actually have a lot of kids. She had, uh, I think, two sets of twins, by the way. Um, so yeah, uh, what was I going to say? I forget. Okay. Uh, let's go. Oh, also we need your name, uh, your name or the person you're asking about their real name is, is very helpful. Um, some of the best and worst people I've ever met. Okay. We're going to try to go through here and find just questions. 
that are very specific, hopefully of a personal nature. How long will it take for the good guys to clean up the cartel? Another five years at least, I would think, right? That's why I asked. That's why I started thinking about it. I'm like, it just can't go down there in the Mexico. It's so ignorant. Oh, we're going to go down to Mexico now and clean up the cartels. <laughs> what? You know, it's like, this is this is the, they've been cleaning up the cartels. And um, this is the chance that they've got, I think, since Nassara is, or Jassara is in effect, to go down there and actually act to get the last remaining strongholds that are in Latin America that are in Mexico. Yeah, they're going to have to go down and, and clean those out too. Um, Senator Lugin of New Mexico has a stroke, nixing the gem. Doesn't really nix their Senate majority, I don't think, because last time they had one of these guys, they they wheeled him out. You know, it was like Captain Pike in Star Trek. You know, boop, boop, all he could do was blink and claim that he voted. So they're going to, the fucking Democrats are the same thing. They're inhuman. So I, I wouldn't get too excited about that. A lot of comments about the Mormons, uh, Blind Frog Ranch, Skinwalker Ranch. I'm so tired of hearing about that place. Although Travis Taylor told me some fun stories about it. Um, thoughts on Russell J. Gould? Who? Do you know who that is? Yes, I have heard of it, and I do not think it is legitimate. And people will argue with me, but I do not like it. Okay. Um, hot shower 126. Jen, my daughter Maggie Thompson, husband and four children are going on vacation in Jamaica on Sunday. Will they be safe? Will Maggie and her family uh, be safe in Jamaica? Hot shower, daughter Maggie Thompson. Maggie Thompson. Yeah, they'll be okay. They might have a little, you know, here's some things that are, you know, make them a little tense, uh, but they'll be okay. Um, Jennifer, can you tell me what's going on with my right hip, my right side hip? Oh, Sue Jones. Yes, I can. Sue Jones is one of my admins at Free Psychic Reading Beacon of Light. She's a wonderful oh, okay. individual who gives her time for free. Um, right hip, Sue Jones. So arthritis. You got arthritis in your hip now. Sorry. Everybody <laughs> justice is saying Phil never said current debt before yesterday. Okay. Right. Uh, that's and, what and I thought also, too. Phil also yeah. says that there's going to be payouts. Um, and, and other people who is uh, the real combative guy, Bogus Hive. But what about people who never had any debt on purpose? Well, um, I've also heard previously that you're gonna that everybody every american's gonna get a hundred thousand paid out five thousand or ten thousand a month or a year or something now that like would that. wipe out that would wipe out the, the job uh, economy yeah. the society yeah that sounds like a democrat plan well, that sounds for like one the, year you know for what, one well, year no. and after, i mean you know after you spend it all on weed and you gotta go back to work right that um, just keeps everybody home is there any significance to the White House being lit up in red, white, and blue besides the Olympics, which is what people are saying it's all about? Yeah, it's a signal to somebody. I just don't know what that signal is. It was definitely a signal. Okay. They're signaling uh, um, other world leaders with these colors. Okay. Um, hi, Jen. How is my daughter Victoria's baby doing? This is Melissa Breidendorf. How is Melissa's daughter's Victoria's baby doing? I'll need to know if that if that babe that's daughter Victoria baby doing is the baby alive or if they passed away um no um that's gonna take more time Mitt Romney's not from Utah he's from Michigan yeah I know but he's the senator from Utah and he has his family has ties in Utah as well as Michigan and he was governor of Massachusetts yes I know that uh Yeah, post. You paid all. You paid everybody off. It's okay. You're gonna get it all back. Uh, Cindy Ralston, Jen, my hubby wants to buy a new truck. We've waited because they are so expensive now. Should he buy now or wait a few more months? Will the price come down in a few months? Jen, a lot of pressure here. Well, you 
it's just think you know you know i'm just saying my husband had an idea and we went out and bought a vehicle um i needed to do it anyway um and i may get that vehicle free it's not really free but you know what you've I'm been saying. paying on it yeah you've been paying on it um I don't know what the cutoff for Nassara is. I don't know when. Let's see. Let's take a look at the supply chain. When is the supply chain going to... When are we going to get more stuff? See, guys, I'm So gonna, we're looking... Well, I mean, this is going to have to... This is going to be look like May, June, if you want to wait. till you're going to start to see um, more supplies. Uh, prices, that's going to be a gradual decline. Um... See, this is why Phil is telling you you're not going to get the principal back. Because if if you did know that, then everybody would probably rush out and get a bunch of loans that they would never have to pay back because all the loans are illegal. They don't want you to do that. But, but if you got not... a birthright check that included the interest and the principal, yeah. does that include the interest? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Because when we were talking, it was about the purchase price. Yeah. The the amount of the loan. That's the principal. Right. So the amount of your loan shows the face value, what you paid for it, right? And right. then you have this little box over here that tells you, and by the end of your loan, you'll have paid. Four times that much. 150 times, times that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um doesn't include the interest that's what they're keeping him busy with that's why he thinks you're only getting interest he doesn't know about the birthright that's yeah he doesn't it. clearly he doesn't that's why you come to this show all Don't of you Phil fans, that. Might be dropping by today. <laughs> this is why you come here because i know more about stuff than phil does in some areas like the I flat earth i know more about that than I, kennedy assassination i know more about that and the nasara part of it my husband but believes me so me, much yeah. about everything. He's he's like my biggest fan. He just completely believes me about everything. Uh, and he's like so much so, he has never paid anything late in his entire life. He has never yes. missed payment in his entire life. I love that. He has not made our house payment yet and it is the fourth. And he's like, I'm not doing it. I'm not paying it. And I'm like, you are a rebel. And you're scaring me because <laughs> don't go delinquent on anything until we know what's, you know. Okay. Deborah Thomas, we're not doing this. Jen, how much will my Nassara just are? I am do not doing that. We're not doing no. that. No. Here's what you do. Go back and add up every every bit of credit that you can find. Like you had a five thousand dollar credit card. Try to add that up. Your mortgages, add that up. Your car loans, add that up. Add that up. Multiply times ten, and I think you're going to get really close to what you're going to get. It's kind of difficult. I think it may be your credit limits on it. Um, yeah, probably. But, but probably Gabriel original... said something about revolving credit. Um, yeah. I think it's that... the original issue credit that you're going to get. So just to get a basic amount, go and add up the, the home loans amounts. Um, and so I think every time you refinance something, you have to get a new loan. Yeah. It's a new note. Well, add it... that in. They started doing that in the 80s before when you refinance a loan, it was the same loan. They just rewrote the terms of it with a little bit of money until they figured out they could charge you inspection fees and loan fees and all this stuff to pretend like it was a brand new loan, even though it wasn't and it was on the same property. So that became a new thing in the 80s, a new way to rip you off. All right. Now, maybe it's not when they sell your loan because they sell our loans all the time immediately yeah, they, as soon they, as you take yeah. out a loan. But, yep. um, but add up your car loans. Add up, you know, anything that you have paid payments on that's not utilities or whatever. And um, get a total times 10. Um, where'd the Federal Reserve get the money that they put in our accounts? Uh, again, your birth certificate. That's why this is your birthright. Because when you were born, you were issued a birth certificate, which is actually a financial instrument, which was bound together with all the other people in your birth year, which became a financial security, which was given a monetary value and sold on the open market to the Rothschilds. Oh, I think I'm going to buy all the people from 1970 right now. You know, that's what I'm going to buy today. That's what I'm going to invest in. You were sold, bought and sold like a piece of cattle. 
And no, dead people are not going to get any of their money back because their debts have been discharged. They have left this earthly plane. They are not here anymore. So you're not going to get no your birth certificate. There's a death certificate to replace it. Yes, which closes the account. The birth certificate. So they opens must give the you some kind the of like more, the money. They just invent it. They just put a value on it, and it, it goes into this account, and it's on a ledger somewhere or in a yeah, now on a like computer. Fictional. And I mean, the whole thing is fictional. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. That's what that's what the Matrix was trying to tell you. Go back to Odyssey. I'm going to have to post it on my YouTube's and watch my reviews of the Matrix and Jupiter ascending from the Wachowski brothers slash sisters. That's what the matrix was. It was a metaphor for the financial system. The whole financial system is fiction. It's a pretend world. It doesn't really exist. There's no real money anymore. When they took away the gold and silver, they took away the real money. It's all credit. It's all an illusion. It's not, Cindy, a, it's not steak. You just think it tastes like steak. Yeah. Um, Cindy S says, I, I inputted the number on the back of my social security um, card on Treasury Direct, and the total is 90518 times 10, I bet you. What do you think? Um, that doesn't make okay, sense. Yeah, let's go. That depends on how old you are, what you've owned, card. if you haven't owned a lot. Tre yeah, Treasury Direct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Cindy, I don't know how old you are. That's interesting. I've never tried to go to Treasury Direct. I'll do that. But here's one thing you can do is again, the letter, the letter is a Federal Reserve Bank designator. Okay. The the H the H on mine is a Federal Reserve Bank. And I'll I'll look it up in a second. And then the number Nobody is my account that. number at that bank. Hey, you can. I um see it. well, okay. She's so, sixty two. So have so, you not owned yeah, much? She should be worth a lot more than that. Uh, you know what? Here's the problem, and I was starting to, when I was talking to my husband about it. I said, "Well, this is where women get the raw deal. Um, what if the house was you were the second on the house?" And I was like, "They always put my husband as the first. and I'm like, "Why? Why do they put you as the first? You know, <laughs> they always put him as the first on the loan. Um, so you'd have to. I don't know. Uh, taking a look at maybe you. You know, you were married, but your you were not on the loan, or if it was just in their name, that would probably go on their social security number. I don't know if you both get that kind of credit. If you both will say, well, they're both on the loan. They both, uh, but it's one note for that house. So I don't know how that's split up or how that's recorded. Um, so I don't, that's, that's, it's all speculation for me with that. But, um, you know, I'm a very, uh, responsible person. I'm a very practical person. I studied business. I ran businesses. Um, you know, and when my husband says, you know, I think I'm going to go buy $10,000 worth of, I'm going to spend all our savings to buy silver. I'm like, ah, all of it? Can we do half? You know, maybe a third. Um, come on. You know, you're, you're scaring me. And like, um, I didn't believe any of this. Right. And over time, more and more, and the more I ask, and the more people come to me and ask, and the more information I get, I'm like, I think this is happening. I mean, I think this is actually happening, and I think it's going to happen this month. And everybody's going to say, well, yeah, yeah, you said it was going to happen last month. You know what? Take a look around. Right. Come yell at me in March. Okay. The, the H turns out to be from the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank District. So that account number is held at the at the Federal Reserve Bank uh, of St. Louis. Its letter designation is H and the account number is uh, is what's on there. So that's where you get it. My previous one, I think, was Atlanta. I had an F. I've got a lot of these things issued. So it just if you apply for a new social security card, they will send you one with this number on the back. It's going to be randomly which one of these 10 or 12 districts it's from. So there you go. There you go. All right. Uh, that's interesting. But it's CPL all the same it. birth certificate that it's tied to. You have tied to have to, a birth right. certificate to right. get a social security. Right. Number. Your birth certificate's given a certain um, monetary value. 
and then accounts are set up with you in all 12 districts, which, like I said, in my case, I look it up, it's probably about $11 billion per person. That's where my I was wondering why her amount's so small. I swear to God, if I get a check for 11000 I'm going to be really disappointed. <laughs> yeah, oh, me too. Crap. I got to get going. One more question. One all right, let's find, let's find one more personal question here rather than a treasury direct type of question. Uh, um, Obisan, if you don't have a red number on your card, it's probably really old. Ask for a new one and you'll have a red number. Tell them you lost it. And by the way, you don't have to pay for that. Go to socialsecurity.gov. Don't go anywhere else. Watch the little letters up at the top. Okay. You know, it's interesting that the old ones don't have the red number. At some point in time, they probably said, well, uh, we got to start putting this number on there. 1999, when they switched over the tax laws and created something called the 1099 OID, Original Issue Discount, which is a thing in the tax law which basically says uh, you're allowed to issue as much credit as you want. And by the way, we will repay you for that credit on your tax return, which means that every time you write a check, every time you use your debit card, every time you spend money, you're actually issuing credit because it's all credit. So you're entitled back to money back all everything you spend in a given year. Now, there are people who tried to file their taxes on that basis and got stonewalled by the IRS. But it is in the law. It is specific. And that's why they started doing it. So, so all it is, people, is human beings are the only one who can create and the only ones money. who can create money with a reason to create it. So... Every time you sign your name, like he says, you have given them another reason to create more money and to make more money off of that. And so your debts have, even on the credit cards for all the stuff that you bought, that people that you bought it from have been paid. The only one that's losing out here is the Federal Reserve and the Cabal because they have made 10 times or more the money off of just signing your name. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, can you do a whole show on the birthright and social security numbers? I want to know how to look mine up. Um, I think we just I've did. <laughs> I think I've done that before. And I think it's on Odyssey. I'll go look for the video and maybe I'll repost it to Rumble and see if it goes through. Uh, won't prices go sky high with Nasara? Jasara, Mo, you're buying into the Democrat notion that growth and prosperity creates inflation. That's not what creates inflation. What creates inflation is the constriction of production. So as long as we are able to produce, prices will not necessarily go sky high. There will be a few people, because they think what they think is when things are good, people get greedy and they start charging more. No, that's not true. Businesses start charging more when their costs go up. So if you take away the taxation burden and the regulation burden off of an economy, Inflation drops through the floor and growth skyrockets, exactly like it did with President Reagan. And by yep. the way, Reaganomics lasted for 20 years, 18 years. All that's uh, more than all that stuff that's credited to Bill Clinton. That's all Reaganomics. It had nothing to do with Bill Clinton's policies. It was Reagan's policies. So, so if yeah, that, don't so, buy into that. That's not going to happen. People, the more competition the lower the prices will be. The more mm -hmm. items there are to sell, the lower the prices will be right. uh, because they have to compete. And it's like, well, if you're selling a car for $100,000 and everybody just got a million cars and we got more dealerships, you got more people, they're going to say, hey, come over here, we're going to sell for 80. And then somebody else says, oh, come over here, we're going to sell for 70. Uh, and then you get back down to normal life. Um, anyway, um, yeah, definitely. Okay. So if, if you empower and if the the older half of society is rich and retired, okay, and the younger half of society gets a little bit here and a little bit there, makes life easier, but they, there's going to be all kinds of positions open for them to fill. They're going to have jobs. They're going to, they're going to have lots of opportunities. They're going to start more businesses. They're going to, um, and then the, the, the upper half is buying. The richer half is older half is buying and they need more things. You're going to have more people producing more things. So we will have an abundance of things, an abundance of things of people working. They won't have any taxes anymore and everybody be making a whole bunch of money. And 
and the wheel cog the wheel keeps turning and as generations go on um it just gets better and better people don't want to sit home some people want to sit home but if you could tell it well you could sit home and maybe you know try to make this money that you've got stretch for the rest of your life or you could go out there and make a crap load selling this widget here um what would you do most people go out there and start their own business and stuff so it will it will feed society and ultimately where that will lead is space because eventually the earth will reach 11 billion in population. And in order to continue to grow, we're going to have to start colonizing space. And that's going to be a wonderful star trekking in future that I can't wait to see. All right. One last question, personal question, Jennifer, my dear friend, Ron, this is Marsha Carr. My dear friend, Ron recently passed from, away from COVID. He was like a father to me. Does he have a message for me? Let me ask Michael. I'm listening. Yes, I am listening to you. Um, basically, don't be afraid to listen to me. Internet shell is what Michael said. I, so we don't have enough time for me to connect with him on the air. Okay, that's going to do it. Thank you. We can't go to fake space, Mike. Yeah, that's right. We bounce off the firmament. Um, <laughs> So thank you, Jen. Thank you for being here with us on Free Reading Friday. I will be back tomorrow night. At least I'm planning to for Saturday Night Live with me and Dr. Brooks and Candace Whitelight and hopefully TV's Blake Wally, once again, looking like Snake Plissken. And uh, we will see you guys then. There's, don't forget, going to be the uh, ngovernedtshirtcompany.com giveaway for that show, SNL. And we do this kind of show. It's kind of a round robin panel where we discuss the issues of the week what we think's happening, what's going to happen. We talk about Ivan and Roxy and things like that. And Dr. Brooks is a brilliant addition to the show. I'd like to thank everybody for being here on Free Reading Friday, especially my lovely guest, Jennifer Pilat Doring. T- tell Blake if he, if he wears an eye patch, I'll give him, I'll give him 50 bucks. <laughs> Jen, will <laughs> give him, everybody... Jen, Jen will give you 50 bucks if you wear an eye patch, Blake, and, and just, look like Just Nick, for the funny of it. You know, know, everybody thought he looked like a pirate. Too. Yeah, that, that will work. And um, Blake, I'm just telling you, that look is working for you, dude. The ladies are digging it. I'm just telling you, keep that look. Keep that look. When you find a look that works for you, go with it. All right, that's it, guys. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend if we don't see you on Saturday night. And it's not Super Bowl weekend yet, so I'm not going to say go Bengals, but I'm going to say go Bengals. Bye.